20 easy Minecraft tricks to impress your friends. Multiplayer server is basically an excuse to show off to your friends. So here are some of the stupidly simple ways to look like a super genius in front of them. And hey, the YouTube analytics gods bet me that you can't hit subscribe before I hit the ground. So if you want to prove them wrong, land on that subscribe button down below. It's free and it helps out a ton. Oh, and what's this at my spawn? Well, of course, it's an ad read. This video is sponsored by Core. Core is a new online platform powered by the Unreal Engine to allow anyone, including you, to create and play PC games for free. Any genre you can think of, it's here. Whether it's a marble racing game like Rollum, an FPS like Silly Gun Game, or my personal favorite, Tower of Terror, which is a game where you try to climb up different randomly generated obstacle courses. With a library of games getting bigger every day, now is definitely the time to join, especially with Core's current student game dev hackathon, where they offer over $10,000 worth in prizes, as well as workshops and guides to learn to make better games. Details on the contest, as well as a download link to Core are in the description down below. So get started on a new slew of games today, and even create your own. Thanks, Core. Number one, secret entrances in Minecraft are very cool to pull off, but most of the time with redstone and such, they take a lot of work. So for a simpler option, you can build one using just this one block. Seriously, if you place down a shulker box with a block above your head, you can actually phase through the shulker box when you open it up to get sneakily into your base. To any onlookers, it looks like you just fell through solid ground, which I guess you did, making this even cooler. And it's definitely the new way I'm getting into my minds. Number two, if you're playing on someone else's SMP, then teleportation is not a luxury that most of us have. That is until recent updates. Because as you can see, if I throw this ender pearl down into a bubble stream, it'll keep it steady. Which then folks, that creates something called an ender pearl stasis chamber. Which sounds cool, but in execution, it's even cooler. If you partner this with pistons to offset the ender pearl, then you can set up a timer system to return you back to home after a day of mining. So if you just want to run away from your base for a day's journey and then come back by nighttime, this is the way to do it. Number three, I'm not breaking any new ground by saying that the Elytra is an invaluable item to Minecraft. And sure enough, it's transformed the landscape of survival. So if you're trying to impress your friends who also have Elytra wings, then you might be able to do that by flying through a one by one hole. By lining yourself up right, you can get a clean shot through a one by one hole just like that. And to any bystanders, it looks like you pull it off the impossible. So by throwing a couple of one by one gaps into your base, you might be able to impress those friends who just use the Elytra for long distance travel. Number four, building a bubble elevator in Minecraft is already a huge help for fast distance travel, but setting one up isn't always a cakewalk. As anyone who's ever built one knows, you need full water source blocks all the way up for this to work. That is, until you use this trick by placing kelp on the bottom soul sand. By just having one water source flowing down the tube, every kelp that you place through that flowing water will replace it and turn it into a full water source block. Which means you just built a fully functional bubble elevator without having to do the mandatory bucket duty that comes with. Number five, let's say you built a path up to your base using gravel, but later on you decided that andesite would actually work better for the build. So how do you replace it? Do you go through that whole path, removing every piece of gravel and then place andesite into the empty holes? Because if you're doing that, you're wasting time. Rather, what you should be doing is if you have an insta mine tool and then the block you want to replace in your offhand, every time that you hit left click and right click at the same time on a block, you're able to instantly replace it with the block that you want to use, helping you clean up those mistakes without any extra headache. Number six, floating in Minecraft survival sounds like a pipe dream or if you're in the end, a bad nightmare. So instead, if you want to use floating to your advantage, you can start by spam clicking the top scaffold on a pillar of the stuff. After a few tries of mashing your mouse button as fast as you can, you'll notice that there should be one or two scaffolding blocks floating off in the distance. Now, keep in mind, these are just client-side ghost blocks, and to any onlookers, you'll look like you're floating mid-air. But just be careful where you do this, because if you're on a server that has flying disabled, doing this could get you kicked for flying if you stand on it for too long. Number seven, if you want to make your build blast proof, then most of the time you have to resort to some pretty ugly blocks. Don't get me wrong, obsidian can look good in certain cases, but something tells me a big obsidian wall around your base just isn't mashing with the aesthetic. So in that case, it's actually possible to build an entire blast proof wall out of waterlogged blocks. And folks, this works with any waterlogged block, which pretty much ensures that anyone trying to blow up your wall is going to be confused as to why it's not working. 
Number eight, breaking the unbreakable blocks in Minecraft is possible, but if you've ever tried to make a hole in the nether roof, you know that it's a long drawn out process. So if you're trying to clear out the end portal frames for a sand duper without having to do all that extra legwork, fortunately, there's an even stranger way to get rid of them. And it's all thanks to the fungus among us. Sure enough, if you plant a giant red mushroom on a dirt block like so with a block above it like this, then when you bone meal it, it should grow as usual, and by doing that, it breaks the three end portal frames on the side, meaning you can skip the boredom and just be a fun guy. Number nine, getting the full effect from a splash potion more often than not seems like a fantasy and not so much a reality. But as it turns out, to bring this promise into the present, all you have to do is look straight up and land a splash potion square on your noggin. By doing that, you hit the sweet spot right on your character's hitbox, and that'll help you sport the splash potion effect as advertised. Better yet, it also works with dispensers, meaning you can set up the proper potion systems to give you the full effect each time, which will have your friends wondering why your speed system works so much better than theirs. Number 10, everybody loves the frugal friend. So if you're able to help your friends save on materials before a big build, it goes a long way to making you the hero. And to do that, all you've gotta do is make stairs in the stone cutter. Seriously, by taking your stone of choice and putting it in this machine instead of the crafting table, you can save so much more per block, and when you're doing a big project, that really adds up. Unfortunately, this trick still doesn't work on any wood stair variants, but if you're trying to make stone steps, then this can save you a couple trips to the quarry. Number 11. Eluding three sword is a hot ticket item. So if you don't have mending on it, you might not want to use up the full durability, which is why it's helpful to know that if you're holding the looting sword while mobs die of a splash potion of harming, that looting effect is still applied to them. This can be especially helpful if you're trying to clear through a large group of mobs with looting, but not actually trying to use up that much durability on your sword. So if you got the potions to fund it, then all you gotta do is quickly switch over to your sword after throwing a potion, or throw the potion from your offhand. And just like that, you'll be able to rack up the loot without having to scuff up your special sword. Number 12. As soon as 1.16 kicked off, then the search for netherite was on. And since you need multiple ancient debris to actually make a netherite ingot to upgrade your tools, then you're gonna need a lot of the stuff. If you're not looking to spend the next hours of your life mining through netherrack, instead, you might find better rewards by using explosives in the nether to find it. Whether it's by using bed explosions or TNT duplication, high-powered explosives is absolutely the best way to clear out the nether for your ancient debris. So while the rest of your friends are just mining for their supply, you'll be decked out to the nines, because unlike them, you used your full arsenal, and then some. Number 13. Getting to the top of the nether has always been more desirable than walking through the dimension on foot. But historically, the glitches to get on top of that bedrock plate have not always been the most kind to work with. That is, until you showed up and used the power of ender pearls to blast right through the roof. All it takes is holding spacebar on a ladder and throwing one of these projectiles to land yourself right up on top. And as soon as you got a nether portal up there, then you might have just found the perfect location for your server's nether hub, letting you travel a large amount of blocks with little to no hassle. Number 14. The pillager mob definitely has a problem with anger management, but if you're trying to impress your friends as the master pacifist, then you should know that it's actually possible to take one of these monsters and bring it over to the good side. You see, just as crossbows work for us, they can actually have their crossbows break. Meaning that if you bait them out of enough shots, they'll eventually be left with no weapon in sight. And at that point, they might still seem a little grumpy, but sure enough, they're pacified. And while I wouldn't feel comfortable reuniting them with society just yet, with progress like this, it's definitely a step in the right direction. Number 15. Keeping monsters away from your base is a tricky and often large problem to solve. So if you're not looking to establish a huge wall around your base, then what might be more apropos is using these carpet barriers. You see, what just looks like a standard carpet to you and me, and even functions like one, to the mobs turns out to be a dangerous pit. Because if you dig a pit six blocks deep, then place string to fill it up and then the carpet right on top, the mobs don't see the string or carpet that's in front of them. Meaning you have an easy access and colorful bridge and they just see no option in sight to get to your base. Number 16, minecar rides can be a ton of fun. But unless you got the proper power behind you, you're not getting very far very fast in one of these. That is, until you partner with Minecraft's other form of travel, the boat. As it turns out, if you push a minecart on top of a boat, then it's actually possible to get the minecart inside of the boat. And from there, you're able to get inside the boat and use its power to manipulate the speed and direction of the minecart, giving you the wacky and also perfect form of travel to wherever you're headed. Number 17. If you're trying to keep your valuables safe, then being able to detect intruders is a huge plus. 
But tripwire hooks are kind of obvious. So instead, we gotta rely on this little guy. Since the pufferfish's hitbox expands when it's scared, as soon as a player, or another mob for that matter, gets close, then this system will be able to detect them and deploy a trap to keep them at bay. Although, for the sake of being thorough, this will only detect players if they're in survival, but really, if you got a creative player coming towards your base, you got bigger problems than a pufferfish is gonna save. Number 18. The villager trading market, much like the stock market, can be a lucrative, yet grueling task to undertake. Though, unlike the stock market, it's actually possible to get perfect trades for the villagers that you want. And fortunately, it's pretty easy to do that. By placing and replacing the same workstation next to a villager, you're essentially able to re-roll what they give you. Meaning not only can you get yourself a mending book villager, but you can also get it at an affordable price. Which is a level of purchase power that many of us would have killed for. And if Martha Stewart had this kind of help, she probably wouldn't have ended up in prison. Number 19. To most people in Minecraft, the signs seem pretty limited. I mean, save for the different colored dyes and wood types, how much else can you really do? Well, as it turns out, through the help of Unicode characters, there's actually quite a lot that you can add to these little things. And since these characters and emojis aren't exactly obvious to use, they can add some really fun diversity to your maps. I mean, if anything, it's just so that I don't have to look at another arrow that looks like this, but instead this. It's just so much nicer. Number 20. Plenty of players in Minecraft want minimap markers. I mean, that's definitely the reason it's in every Minecraft mod pack I've ever seen. But a feature that passed most people by is that by right clicking on a banner, you're able to add it onto the map and show exactly where it is which can create some really interesting and detailed maps if you want, especially when zoomed out. Better yet, throw a name on that banner and then as soon as you right click on it, you'll actually see that custom name on the map. So if you're trying to find home, you don't have to wonder where it is. Just look on it and oh, there it is, home. And with that folks, wow that subscribe button down below and have a good one, all right?